In this video, we'll learn what fraud is, the most common ways fraud is detected, what controls companies put in place to prevent or detect fraud, and why some employees don't report fraud. Fraud is the deliberate misrepresentation to gain an advantage over another party. Fraud comes in many different forms, including fraud in financial statements, the theft of assets, and subsequent cover-up and disclosure fraud. Just to make sure we clarify this, fraud is not the same as an error, which can occur innocently. Fraud is a purposeful act to mislead others. A common element of fraud is that it leads to material representations of the financial statements. How is fraud detected? According to the ACFE study of occupational fraud, the most common method of detection was a tip, 43%. In organizations with hotlines, 49% come from a tip, but it declines to 31% in organizations with no hotline. Internal audit was next with 15%, followed by management review, 12%. The external audit only detected fraud in 4% of the cases. That means that the company should not look to the external auditors to detect fraud, but rather build and maintain strong internal controls and implement an effective audit committee. What are some of the red flag warnings of fraud? The top two individual warning signs include living beyond one's means, 42%, and financial difficulties, 26%. The question is, how can the anti-fraud controls identify these red flags? It is important that companies make sure that their internal controls truly are designed to identify these behaviors. Red flags might also show up through internal or, and external relationships, such as unusually close association with customers and vendors, and a wheeler-dealer attitude. The employee's personal difficulties, such as divorce or family problems or social isolation, might also indicate red flag behavior. Refusal to take vacation might be another indicator that many companies build internal controls around, such that everyone in accounting must take at least five consecutive days of vacation per year. Internal controls do not guarantee protection against fraud. However, they can help to both mitigate losses and deter some potential fraudsters. With 43% of frauds being detected by TIPS, hotlines should play an essential role in organizations' anti-fraud programs. However, only 64% of surveyed companies had a hotline in place, and only 13% provided rewards for whistleblowers. Internal auditors should have their eyes wide open with respect to whether managers have personal and work pressures that create conflicts of interest, one of the signs of ethical columns. It may seem counterintuitive that while the external audit only detects fraud 4% of the time, it is the most common anti-fraud control used by companies surveyed. We might conclude that the financial statement audit is conducted not so much to detect fraud, but because the SEC requires public companies to have such an audit. On the other hand, it could also be a deterrent. Establishing and emphasizing the importance of company of the company code of conduct called the tone at the top, having an internal audit department and conducting a strict and frequent internal audit and certifying the financial statement by management, as well as the external audit are some of the top anti-fraud controls that can deter or detect fraud in an organization. Just like internal controls are designed to deter or detect fraud, there are a variety of factors that discourage the reporting of fraud. For instance, poor tone at the top when management does not seem to place a high value on internal controls and doing the right things. Dominating and intimidating personalities or relationships of mistrust, excessive team loyalty, can also contribute to employees not wanting to report fraud. If there aren't sound policies and procedures or just a perception that wrongdoing will not be addressed if misconduct is reported. Employees may fear the unknown. What will happen if I report suspected fraud? Will I lose my job? Will there be retaliation? Will everyone know that I reported it? Many companies have procedures on how to handle a person that reports wrongdoing and an anti-retaliation policy. In choosing an employer, it is important that you also understand if the company has solid internal controls in place 
and encourages at all levels that employees adhere to a code of conduct. Financial statement fraud typically falls into three categories, revenue overstatement, expense understatement, and improper asset valuations. In terms of revenue overstatements, the, this includes recording gross rather than net revenue, recording of revenues of other companies acting as a middleman, uh, recording sales that never took place, recording future sales in the current period, and recording sales of products that are out on consignment. Expense understatements include recording cost of sales as a non-operating expense, capitalizing operating costs, and not recording some expenses at all. Improper asset valuations include manipulating reserves, changing the useful life of assets, failing to take a write down when needed, and manipulating estimates of fair market value. Why does financial statement fraud occur in the first place? Theoretically, there, there are three factors that appear to be present in every case of financial statement fraud that are addressed in auditing standards. That means that auditors specifically look for these factors when they design and execute the audit plan. These three factors are situational pressure, perceived opportunity, and rationalization. Situational pressures may prompt an otherwise honest person to commit fraud. It typically occurs as a result of immediate pressure within either the internal or the external environment. In terms of the factor of perceived opportunity, the opportunity to commit fraud and conceal it must exist. People do not normally commit fraud believing they will get caught. They do it because they believe they can get away with it. The third factor of rationalization explains that people who commit financial statement fraud are able to rationalize the act. Being able to justify the act makes it possible. The individual must first convince themselves that the behavior is temporary or is acceptable.